Today, we're going to see something truly exciting, at least if you get excited by authentication, authorization, and cloud stuff. So we're going to see how to authorize access to a GCP resource from a workflow in a GitHub without using any service account key and without storing any credentials in a GitHub secrets. OK, so before we look into how to do that, let me explain what we want to do. GitHub released the new feature. This feature exposes some variables inside the workflow, and these variables allow you to exchange them for an OIDC token, so you can get an ID token. Why this is important? Because a while ago, Google came up with another feature called Workload Identity Federation. Now combining the Workload Identity Federation from Google and the OIDC support from uh, GitHub can give us very interesting solutions when we want to authenticate workloads in the cloud without exposing uh, any service account key. To understand how we can do this, let's have a look at the Workload Identity Federation feature. Workload Identity Federation is a way to authenticate and authorize identities from external identity providers inside GCP. So with Workload Identity Federation, what we can do, we can create workload identity pools, and inside these pools, we can specify configuration for multiple providers. This configuration defines the rules for the security token service. That means that any identity coming from an external identity provider that has been configured in GCP now can exchange the ID token using the STS service, so the security token service, for an access token specific for that identity. So now let's have a look at the configuration inside GCP. So to configure this, I created the repo with the Terraform configuration so you can uh, easily and quickly replicate this at home. Let's have a look at what we need in terms of um, GCP resources. So we are going to create four resources. The first one is the Workload Identity Federation pool. And the second one is the provider inside the pool. And then we're going to create a service account and the policy for this service account to be impersonated by the external identity. So let's have a look at them one by one. If you open the, the repo, you can see that there are two folders. One contains the workload identity federation configuration. So if you open the main file, you can see we have these two resources. One is the identity pool and the other one is the identity pool provider. To better understand this configuration, let's quickly jump into the ID token uh, that we received from GitHub. This is the content of the token. So as you can see, we have a number of claims. The one we care about for this specific um, tutorial is the repository claim and the ref claim. Essentially, this one is, as you can see, the name of the repository, including the org or the username. And then we have a ref, which is the branch. So what we want to do is, is to allow only identities belonging to, to this repository that run on, uh, on a specific branch, on the main branch. Back to the provider configuration, we can see that we call this provider GH provider, and we have the attribute mapping. I created the custom attribute, and this custom attribute uses the common expression language to specify that is composed of two claims, the repository claim from the ID token and the ref claim. So we only want to allow something that has the combination of these two. And the other thing we need to specify in this resource is the issuer URI and the allowed audiences that we're going to see where this is used. There are other two resources that are under service account. So as we said, we want to impersonate a service account. To impersonate a service account, we need to first create the service account. So we create a service account called GH Runner, and then we define a policy where we specify a member for the service account and the permission that the member has, which is workload identity user. So this, this permission uh, enables the impersonation for uh, the service account. So now we can quickly see in the console how they translate. Um, in here, we have uh, workload identity federation. And under the identity pool, we can see the configuration for our provider. If we click on this, we can have a look at the attributes and we can see the custom attribute that we specified. So we have this using the common expression language. The other thing we want to look at is the service account configuration. So we have a GitHub runner service account. If we click on it and we look at permissions, we can see that under principles, we see a new identity, which is the workload identity pool. And then we specify the attribute here. So the attribute must be matching this, which is the first part is the name of the repository. And the second part is the name of the branch. Now, in order to access resources in GCP, the other thing we want to do is to 
uh, give some permission to this service account. So what I did, I created, I manually created a secret called my secret. And this secret under permission allows the um, GitHub runner to access the value of the secret. So now what we need to see is how we use this configuration in the workflow. So now if we look at the workflow, what we need to do is to enable this ID token. And by enabling this, we're gonna get two new variables inside our workflow. The two no new variables are actions ID token request URL and actions ID token request token. So these two can be used in the next step to issue an ID token. So the thing we need to do is to call this URL using the request token as a bearer token. The other thing I'm doing here is the I'm specifying the audience. So I'm specifying the audience that we configured in, uh, in Terraform. So now after this call, what we get, we extract the value from the JSON that, that is returned and we store it inside a bash variable. So now this ID token is the identity from the workflow and is issued by GitHub. What we can do is to use the secure token service to exchange this ID token for an access token of the external identity. So we get back the access token for the external identity. And now because we gave permission to this identity to impersonate our service account, what we can do, we can call the IAM credentials API with the access token, and we can exchange that for an access token of the service account that we, we want to impersonate. At this point, we have a new access token and this access token can read the secret that we created. So if we look at the action that was already executed, you can see that you can see that we are able to access the secret using the service account that we impersonate and using the external identity. And the content of this is page 64, so we can do and we can see the content, so this is a secret. So this is it, hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.